peace and welcome to our 007 special of Oddly Familiar. We are huge James Bond fans around here, and with the delay of No Time to Die, we needed to get our Bond fix somehow. And what's a better way than an Oddly Familiar episode all about the secret agent himself? Whether it be parody, plagiarism, or paying homage, we may be talking about it today. And some may be shocking. Positively shocking. Here are 10 times that video games were inspired by 007. Number 10, Gex. Enter the Gecko. Our first up comes from a game with a few different names. Besides Gex Enter the Gecko, you have Gex 3D Enter the Gecko, Gex 3D Return of the Gecko, and also Gex 64. Besides the differences in names, you will notice all of the covers have the same Bond style tuxedo, as well as the James Bond looking gun barrel behind Gex, and also the stance by the main character. This is a classic Bond pose. You can see it in different promotional materials, but I think I found the exact photo shoot that produced this pose. And it may come from Timothy Dalton. The way he has his right foot out in front, both legs slightly bent, and left hand up in the air while aiming with the right. A lot of shots have a similar pose, but you will see some small differences while this one seems to be pretty close to exact. Also on a side note, there is a bonus bonanza known as the Spy Who Loved Himself which happens to be a twist on The Spy Who Loved Me, which was also later parodied in the Austin Powers movie, The Spy Who Shagged Me. At the beginning of this bonus stage, Gex states, Well, this level must have been made by Q Branch. In an obvious nod to Q and the branch that makes all of Bond's cool gadgets. On another stage, Gex states, I'm looking for a man called Scaramanga, who happens to be the man with the golden gun, Christopher Lee. The Gex main theme also has a little bit of a Bond feel, but I believe it's different enough to avoid any lawsuit. It's not one that I would usually include in the Oddly series, but this entry is the entire package. Number 9, Eternal Champions, Larson Stage Theme. And of course, that's some James Bond sounding music. Our number 9 spot is a lot more simple than our previous entry. This one doesn't have any stances or cool one-liners, it's just a good old classic oddly familiar theme. Eternal Champions is a 1993 fighting game developed and published by Sega for the Sega Genesis. It was one of the few fighting games at the time which was made for a home console rather than being an arcade port. Two years later, an enhanced version dubbed Challenge from the Dark Side was released for the Sega CD. The game was given an updated soundtrack to take advantage of the CD hardware, and this theme was completely changed. So you will not find a high quality version of it. And that's a shame, because I was hoping to hear it, but it wasn't meant to be. Number 8, we have Kung Lao from Mortal Kombat. This entry is less about the character and more about his hat. One of Kung Lao's most popular moves is his hat throw. He has a steel brimmed hat that has been sharpened enough to do some serious damage. Created by Ed Boon and John Tobias, in a 1995 issue of EGM, the MK3 official collector's book, they state that his hat was inspired by Arik Goldfinger's number one henchman, Oddjob. 
Oddjob is extremely strong and durable. He can even crush a golf ball with a single hand. And his weapon of choice? His steel-brimmed hat as he demonstrated to 007. Portrayed in the 1964 movie Goldfinger by actor Harold Sakata, an American of Japanese descent born in Honolulu, Hawaii. An Olympic caliber weightlifter, he won silver medal for the United States at the 1948 Summer Olympics in London. Standing 5'10 and weighing in at 284 pounds, he might not be as small as some people may think. Harold Sakata played the role perfectly. I couldn't imagine anyone else as a job. And he's always a good character to choose when you want to piss off your friends in GoldenEye 007. <laughs> Number 7, Knight's Journey of Dreams, Giant Girania, Hard Version. And here is of course, James Bond. Our lucky number 7 spot comes from the sequel to the Sega Saturn game Knights into Dreams which personally, I did like. I actually still own my original copy from 1996 and the controller it came with. The sequel was released in 2007 for the Nintendo Wii. Giant Girania was arranged and composed by Teruhiko Nakagawa. He is a member of the Sonic team for Sega. He began working for Sega in 1994 and his first project was Metalhead. I don't know if this one is on purpose, there doesn't seem to be any clear connection between the two franchises, but it does seem to share at least a portion of the melody, even if it's just a coincidence. Secret agent James Blonde had just uncovered the latest evil plot of a master criminal who called himself Number 6, Super Mario Brothers Super Show Episode 22 on Her Majesty's Sewer Service But Koopfinger was one step ahead and pulled his old turn you with the stone trick Hey! Whoa! If you thought Mario and Nintendo were going to escape the long arm of James Bond, think again the title of this episode is a play on words of On Her Majesty's Secret Service, the sixth James Bond movie, and it stars George Lazenby, his first and only appearance as 007. You can also find a reference to this movie in the Nintendo 64 game GoldenEye 007. During the intro and the results screen, you will see OHMSS, On Her Majesty's Secret Service. The Super Mario Bros. Super Show not only has the parody title, but has a secret agent who shows up in the episode. His name is Blonde, James Blonde. And he is searching for Koopfinger, a play on words of Goldfinger, but it happens to be King Koopa. His name is similar to Goldfinger, but his outfit and his looks seem to be more like Blofeld. He even has a small pet nearby. The story shares some plot points with the Goldfinger movie, and it's a fun little episode, especially for fans of the 007 movies. <laughs> Number 5. James Pond. In at number five, we have James Pond, and if the name itself wasn't enough, the covers all pay homage as well. On almost every single James Pond cover, you can find this pose, and that is the James Bond stance. 
I dare say this is perhaps the most recognizable pose of any fictional character. You can find this used in numerous 007 promotional materials, including movie covers, book covers, soundtracks, video games, and you can find it being done by all of the Bonds. Connery, Lazenby, Moore, Dalton, Brosnan, and Craig all did the pose. Now when you take a second look at the James Pond cover, you can see a few more Easter eggs. The oil rig is Blofeld's base from Diamonds Are Forever, and the fighting scuba divers are a scene in Thunderball. In the first James Pond game, you can find many more 007 references. The stage names are parodies of movie titles, such as License to Bubble after License to Kill, Leak and Let Die after Live and Let Die, and A View to a Spill after A View to a Kill. In one of my favorite parodies in the game, the boss is named Dr. Maybe, after the very first Bond movie, Dr. No. So the game is all about a fish in a tux named James Pond trying to defeat the evil villain, Dr. Maybe. the game Silent Hill, a theme named Silent Hill. Now compare that to the James Bond theme. Coming from the 1999 PlayStation game, Silent Hill was developed and published by Konami. The music was composed by Akira Yamaoka. He has worked on almost 50 different soundtracks in gaming, with one of my favorites being Snatcher. The James Bond theme has been credited to Monty Norman, and he has received royalties since 1962. The tune was arranged by John Barry, who would later go on to compose the soundtracks for 11 James Bond films. Courts have ruled twice that the theme was written by Monty Norman, despite claims and testimony by Barry that he had actually written the theme. Regardless of who wrote the James Bond theme, it has become one of the most well-known pieces of music in all of cinema. I don't know how many composers can say they wrote a theme which has appeared in 25 films, but I am sure that list is rather short. Gear Solid 3, Snake Eater, the title sequence. While watching this intro and hearing the song that accompanies it, I'm sure it's not too difficult to picture your typical James Bond title sequence. One of the staples of the series is the opening credits. They always have a distinct look and are immediately recognizable. You need silhouettes of ladies, guns, and most of the time, a natural substance. Almost all Bond title sequences have either water, smoke, lava, oil, or sand. And when you talk about the singers of the 007 films, the first one that comes to my mind would be Shirley Bassey. She is the only person in the series to perform more than one title song, and she has done a total of three, including perhaps the most popular songs in Goldfinger and one of my personal favorites, Diamonds Are Forever. Now when comparing all of that to the Metal Gear intro, you have basically all of the same ingredients, besides the scantily clad ladies, which makes sense as this is more for teens rather than adults like 007. The song even has a Shirley Bassey feel. I'm not gonna compare the singer to Shirley Bassey because they are on different levels, but the Metal Gear singer is good in her own right. And if you listen to the song, there are plenty of brass instruments, very similar to a Bond theme. Still in a dream, it up. Number two, 
JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, a theme titled Prosciutto. Another one that sounds like the James Bond theme. There are some points in it that don't really sound like the Bond theme, but it pretty much always comes back to those four famous notes. JoJo's Bizarre Adventure is a 2002 game for the PlayStation 2. Developed and published by Capcom, it's a single-player action-adventure game, with the music being composed by Mitsuhiko Takano. I know him best for composing the MVC2 character select theme, because I worked in an arcade when that game was at its peak popularity. So that theme is burned into my ear. Some of his other work includes Diminished Cap and Deadly Silence. The game JoJo's Bizarre Adventure was only released in Japan. The North American and European releases only saw the light of day at E3 in 2002. While in 2003, it wasn't included in Capcom's lineup at E3. It just disappeared and slowly faded away. However, on October 20th, 2018, an English fan translation was released and made available for download, so English-speaking only audiences can now enjoy the game. Golden Number 1. Sly Spy, Secret Agent Yes, a game about a secret agent takes influence from James Bond. No real surprise here. But how deep does it really go? In no order, we have quite a few. Up first are the underwater and skydiving stages. The scuba divers are a direct nod to the previously mentioned Thunderball scene, the massive underwater fight while everyone is wearing scuba gear. And the skydiving scene comes from Moonraker when 007 is fighting with Jaws in midair. And speaking of Jaws, the third boss bears an uncanny resemblance. He is dressed like Jaws all the way down to the suspenders. But instead of metal teeth, he has metal arms, so maybe this guy's name is Biceps. Then when you reach the boss to stage 6, you will meet a guy who likes to throw his hat. He isn't dressed much like Odd Job, but it's difficult to not think of Odd Job when everything else in the game screams 007. A few of the gadgets and weapons are also taken directly from Bond movies. First up, you will see this golden gun meter on the top right corner. Your enemies will sometimes drop power-ups, and once you collect enough, you will be able to use it for a limited amount of time. On another stage, you will see our protagonist flying around in his jetpack. Another Thunderball reference. When James Bond was escaping to his Aston Martin DB5, you will see him flying around with a jetpack. <laughs> Sly Spy is an arcade game released in 1989 by Data East. This game stars a spy named Sly. Quite ingenious and such a creative name calling it Sly Spy. Jokes aside, I am not 100% sure, but I will go out on a limb and say this was supposed to be a Bond game, but they couldn't secure the rights. So they had to change a few things and try to cover up the fact. It was enough to avoid any legal actions, but if you really look at it, it's hard to deny. During one scene, I think they forgot to change the text because they call him Agent 007. Maybe they forgot, or maybe they didn't care. I don't know, but I think that helps confirm that it was supposed to be a 007 game. One interesting note that has nothing to do with Bond, Sly Spy can be seen in Robocop 2. During the arcade ambush scene, you can see the arcade cabinet a few times in the background. <laughs> So there you have our first oddly familiar episode all about James Bond. We already have a few entries for a second episode, 
Maybe we'll aim for November when No Time to Die comes out. We just have to get 10 total. So if you know any games inspired by the secret agent, please let us know. Last but not least, big thanks and huge shout out to gold level patrons Bearsona11 and Quantum X. I am CC. ICC. Thanks for watching. Peace.